Hello and welcome to Young Money. I'm Nozi Pombanjo. As you can see, we're coming to you from the Santon skyline. And as always, we're bringing you some brilliant stories of Africa's young entrepreneurs. Coming up is uh, Trevor Gosling. He is the founder and the CEO of Lulaland. And Lulaland is solving one of the most pressing problems that young entrepreneurs have and that is making sure that their ideas get funded. In the second half of the show, we actually bring you some of the voices of the entrepreneurs that Lulaland has actually funded. Do stay tuned. Uh, my name is Trevor Gosling and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Lulaland. I've always been pretty entrepreneurial. Uh, but I actually started out uh, with a corporate background. I, I went the chartered accounting route and did my articles and then actually spent the next five years in investment banking. But I come from a pretty entrepreneurial family and um, all owning their own businesses. And uh, at that time when I was in investment banking, my brother uh, founded what became uh, Groupon South Africa locally along with his business partner. And I just saw the aggressive growth in there, especially in the, in the digital space in South Africa. I realized it was in its infancy. And that really prompted me to then get out of investment banking and uh, explore the digital world and uh, launch my first business. So the first business was uh, in the e-commerce space where we uh, focused on uh, flash selling uh, fine wines, gourmet uh, food, craft beers, uh, related ac uh, accessories and that sort of thing. And uh, within two years, it became one of the fastest growing e-commerce companies uh, in South Africa. And then uh, fortunately, a Naspers came knocking on the door and they were looking to, to bring us into their group. So I actually uh, was fortunate enough after just over two years to, to exit the business to, to Naspers. Towards the end of my time with Naspers, I wanted to uh, get back into financial services. That's where I spent my uh, corporate career. And um, at the same time, I wanted to use the technology that I'd, uh, or the understanding of the digital environment that I'd learned uh, through my time in uh, e-commerce. So when I put those two together, um, I got into a subject called FinTech, financial technology, which was really taking off in the world, but, but was still in its uh, early days in South Africa. And as I was looking at what FinTech models were really being successful, uh, the one that really stuck out to me that was really needed in South Africa was using technology to provide uh, quick and easy access to finance for SMEs. So I saw, uh, at that point, I saw a crazy stat that almost 90% of SMEs were um, unable to access funding through uh, traditional institutions. And I thought this is a huge problem that needs to be solved. And that's what uh, got me down the road of uh, building Lula Lend. <laughs> Yeah, so if you look at small businesses, they haven't been well supported traditionally by, uh, by traditional institutions and your banks. And the reason for that is because um, banks uh, originally aren't set up to be able to, to fund SMEs. It's, it's a very risky space and uh, just the way that banks are set up with their network infrastructure and the operational costs involved, it doesn't make a lot of uh, financial sense for them to, to be able to provide funding uh, with smaller loan amounts to, to businesses. So the only way you can really solve that issue is through technology and through automation to be able to drive down the cost of funding and to be able to scale your business model. So we've essentially focused on, on those elements, the ability to automate our process, to, um, to risk a client and to be able to provide them funding uh, utilizing technology. Um, look, it's, it's, it's getting easier. So I mean, in the, in the early days, it was, it was really difficult. We, um, we were obviously very new to the space and this was the first time our technology was being tested, you know, when we went live and we started giving out uh, the first uh, set of loans to customers and not knowing what the performance of those would be. But through um, the, the ability that we have uh, through our technology, we were able to constantly improve um, on our analysis of companies. And so always better, um, you know, provide more accurate and, and better funding to businesses. Uh, at the same time, as we've developed a bit of a track record, that's given investors a bit more uh, confidence in us and as a, as a business. And then they've subsequently provided us with additional capital so that we can continue to grow and scale. I think, yeah, something that, that small businesses need to consider is uh, 
to have good administration of their business. So, you know, just a fairly uh, uh, comprehensive sort of accounting records that just gives, gives a good indication of where they are uh, in that point of time. So it, it might feel like, you know, a lot of entrepreneurs are more uh, marketing and sales focused and that's where they're pushing. But it is still important to, to keep that admin uh, up because that not only helps a business owner understand exactly, you know, where their business is at that point in time, but it helps with them uh, looking to raise additional funding to, to grow their business. Look, I, I, uh, in terms of cryptocurrency and what it's going to do to Lululand in, in the short term, or actually in the, in the medium term, I don't think it's going to have uh, a massive impact. It is something that we uh, always keep an eye on and we're excited about what the, the blockchain uh, technology is going to do. But I think that's more of a long-term play for us. This is something that's affecting uh, um, more treasury uh, sectors of traditional institutions. So in terms of our business model at this moment in time, we don't see it having too much of an impact. Over the next three to five years, we're looking to uh, scale and grow uh, in South Africa quite aggressively. We know there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of SMEs in South Africa who need access to funding, and we believe we, we're solving a big solution there. And there, there is a big market there that we can, we can scale up to. Uh, thereafter, we're looking at other emerging markets that um, have a have a similar setup to South Africa that we believe we can we can launch our platform into and also um, assist SMEs in those uh, those areas. So because we're utilizing technology and we're assessing companies in a different way to, to your banks and traditional institutions, we really understand the true business health uh, of a company that's looking for funding through us. So uh, one of the examples is, is a company by the name of IMAS, uh, who are in the educational space, who uh, were turned down by a bank, but through our technology we were able to assess this company and see there were strong compelling reasons that they should receive funding. So in a very short turnaround time, we were able to uh, provide them with access to funding. And subsequent to that, we've been able to provide um, higher amounts of funding at a more cost-effective rate as they've, they've built a relationship with, uh, with Lula Lend. Um, and that's given them the ability to expand from uh, day one when they were at uh, uh, 13 uh, learners to currently they, they're looking to pursue 1,000 learners in, in 2018. Okay. So IMAS first applied to us in uh, 2015, okay. so it was actually in the infancy of uh, Lululand being completely active and they've been with us uh, over the past two years. Exactly, that's, that's the exciting thing. So having uh, come from a similar background that we are startups, we understand uh, early stage companies because we are ourselves one. Um, and that's what we like to see. We want to invest in companies that are growing. We're not looking to um, uh, put loans into businesses that uh, are, are going to be detriment uh, of detriment to the to the business owner. That they're going to struggle to repay the debt. We want to put uh, funding into companies that's giving them the ability to scale their operations, uh, employ more people, and uh, doing great things like IMAS, which is um, giving professional education to more and more students. There you have it. Uh, that is Trevor Gosling sharing with us his insights uh, around the business Lula Lent. Let's take a short break, but when we come back, let's put Trevor's words to the test and let's speak to some of the young entrepreneurs that Lula Lent has actually funded. Welcome back to Young Money. If you've just joined us, this is an episode about one of the biggest headaches that young entrepreneurs are constantly facing, and that is matching their ideas to funding. Now, in the first half of the show, we were speaking to Trevor Gosling, who was sharing with us how his business speaks to this challenge directly. But we want to put Trevor's insights to the test, and so we are now moving into a conversation with one of the entrepreneurs that Lula Land has actually funded. And so we're speaking to Nati Teller, who is the founder and CEO of IMAS and that is the Institute for Management Accounting Strategy and we find out how IMAS and Lululand have made ideas 
turn into real dreams. And later on in the show, as we wrap up this conversation, we go to Monash University, where we meet some of uh, the young social entrepreneurs who are part of a fellowship program there that is really enabling uh, social entrepreneurship on the African continent. Do stay tuned. My name is Nati Teller, the founder and the CEO of the Institute of Management Accounting and Strategy. Little and uh, is a company that we met in 2015 when my company was still at its infant stage and we're desperately looking for funding. We had knocked in many doors and been turned down. Luckily enough, when we approached Lululand, they were very open to the idea of assisting us with funding. Um, can you tell us a bit more about your company? My company is in the education space. We are a, a professional accountancy training institute. Therefore, helping people who aspire to become chartered management accountants or chartered certified accountants. Therefore, we attract a number of graduates who already hold an undergraduate qualification. And these, they, then they aspire then to hold a professional accountancy qualification. That's how then we attract students and then we train them over a period of time. Well, again, being a technology-based company, we, we looked more at the, the data points around the business that uh, gave us comfort that this was a healthy business, that they were growing in the right direction. And that um, all those factors together encouraged us that, uh, that we would provide uh, funding to them. So one of the main things we make sure we don't do is uh, be subjective about our decisions. It's, it's trying to be as objective as possible and that's that's what a system does. It gives you uh, the ability to be completely objective. So um, when, when IMAS applied for funding, they, they ticked all the boxes in terms of the, the business health, uh, the affordability around it, the, uh, the strong credit scores, and we'll be, we were able to assist them uh, through that. Yes, uh, since we started working with Lululand in 2015, uh, it's been two years now, and every time the business needs to grow, whether be it we're setting up a new branch in Durban or in Pretoria, we know that in Lululand we have a trusted partner that we can engage with and, and, and share our vision. And uh, what I love the most about it is the fact that they have a quick turnaround in terms of their processes. Unlike many DFIs that we have in South Africa who can take as long as four months or six months before they come up with an answer. With Lululand, you engage them today, by the afternoon, you already have an answer. And that's what makes them a great organization to work with. You know, Bramfontein is the heart of education. In, in, in Gauteng. You've got vets, you've got a number of, of colleges that are operating in the Bramfontein area. Therefore, we felt that we want to be the heart, to be at the heart of where education is taking place in, in Gauteng. That is why we are located in Bramfontein. For us, uh, we've been leveraging on social media because many young people, you know, they're constantly on their phones. Therefore, now we're leveraging on social media to actually speak to the potential students. That's how we market our business. Um, so, Lululand is based uh, online, so that means we can uh, do business with companies sitting anywhere um, in South Africa. We are actually based in Cape Town ourselves. But the fact that uh, IMAS are based in Bramfontein and they didn't have to come and visit a branch, uh, they could do the whole application process online and we never actually had to meet face to face, um, just shows where the, the business world is going. The, the, the online world is, uh, is an exciting space and it's, it's time saving uh, and it's improving the, the lives of, of people who utilize it. Most definitely. Um, if we look at the number of students that we currently uh, have as an institution, they've grown. And the reason why, actually we've grown from having seven students in 2013 to having 616 students in 2017. And our next target now is to have a thousand students in 2018. And all thanks to social media, you know, and digital platform like your, 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 your Google AdWords that we've used over the, the years. Therefore, we're very excited and we see lots of opportunities as well to grow our business into the digital space. We recently launched our education app, which is targeting students that are studying towards SEMA across the African continent because we want to bring in um, 
education closer to people and broaden access to high quality education to the rest of the African continent. We developed the app with the help of a number of guys who are based overseas actually. Uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's multiple business uh, people that I look up to, um, the likes of uh, Steve Jobs and what they've done. Uh, uh, and then Elon Musk, a current one, you know, a South African born man who's, who's doing amazing things and not just uh, improving lives, but uh, basically changing the world that we currently live in. That's, that's exciting and that's, that's what made me want to be an entrepreneur and makes me want to be an entrepreneur. It's, it's building new cool things that, um, that, that benefits people and, and improves lives. That's, that's, that's what I take home from that. Yes, uh, South Africa is blessed with uh, a lot of entrepreneurs, you know. The one that comes to mind that I always read about is Adrian Goh, the founder of Discovery. He inspires me a lot. Mark Zuckerberg is another guy who, whom I've actually read a lot about and I follow him very closely. He's my source of inspiration. In South Africa we have a lot of people who have made money via tenders and therefore a lot of people then when you mention that you're an entrepreneur they expect you to rock up in a fancy car to be staying in a fancy house not understanding that actually takes time to build a real business yeah that's huge i think uh, entrepreneurship is uh, glamorized in the media and in the movies and, and uh, what local south africans see uh, happening in silicon valley where in reality it's it's hard work uh, it's a job that basically never ends you know if you're in a corporate it's generally eight to five but when you're uh, when you're in the entrepreneurial space it's a, it's a job that never never sleeps basically so um, guys don't realize when they're stepping into this world it, it is a lot of challenges it's super rewarding but uh, there's a lot of hard work involved and that's true. I remember uh, my first uh, three years of running IMAS. I actually worked for almost 16 hours a day, you know, and at some point I, I, I regretted why I actually jumped into this bandwagon. I thought I was better off in the private space, in, in the private sector where I was in banking as well. But um, entrepreneurship is all about hard work. For me, I've been blessed that um, my wife works with me, therefore we, we tend to see each other almost every second, therefore that helps. But other than that, I have um, a, a young boy, I make sure that when I'm at home, I switch off my phone and all the attention goes to my son because I, I don't see him that often and as much as I like to see him. If when I'm at home, he's, he's like daddy's boy. He's all over me and I love that moment. Do you know what I mean? On weekends, whenever I get the, the opportunity to be at home as well, I do something similar. We go to church, after church, it's just me and my boy. And that's it. Yes, Foran, I think, um, look, you've got, you got to make some sacrifices. You can't, uh, you can't be hanging out with friends as, maybe as often as, as you could in the, in the past. But uh, at the end of the day, um, as uh, Mr. Taylor says, you've got to use the time that you do have free uh, wisely and dedicating that to, to family and, and making most of that. So uh, I would say cutting out TV, uh, cutting out uh, too much time on social media, that's uh, not adding too much value. For me, you've got to do your homework very well. You've got to understand the industry that you are in. You've got to understand who you're competing with. You've got to understand your, your key success factors, you know what I mean? So that you can actually uh, eliminate certain uh, mistakes that other people have committed. You've got to read a lot. And what I really like right now is the whole concept of a lean startup. To say, you've got to start slow. And your idea doesn't have to be perfect. You know, you'll refine it along the way. Because mo many entrepreneurs, they wait until their, their idea is perfect before they launch the business. As soon as you have a, a, an, an idea, test it with around a few people and launch it to the market. And then you'll refine it as you go along. Don't wait to have a perfect idea. Yeah, so off the back of that, so it's, it's really getting a product out there as soon as possible. Uh, one that, of course, you're happy with, but 
uh, isn't perfect because when you start getting customer feedback and engagement that's that's what you know that's when you know uh, what improvements you need to make otherwise you, you're developing based on what's based in, uh, in your head which uh, isn't always the market perception or what the market's looking for um, there's another thing I wanted to bring up Oh, and then it's really uh, making use of digital tools. There's so many cool applications out there that can speed up processes. I mean, back in the day, you'd have to spend uh, days putting your accounts together and that sort of thing. This can be done uh, automatically through uh, through account, online accounting apps that are available to, to entrepreneurs. And that's just a small uh, taste of it. There's a lot of digital applications that people can use in their business to be able to uh, have a good picture of it, if it's on the, the analytics side for your marketing uh, or wherever. Tusana Community Engagement Program. Well, Tusana Community Engagement Program is a program that aims to collaborate education and entertainment together for young learners in vulnerable communities. Um, we do this by making sure that every child gets the opportunity to showcase their talent to the community and also to make sure that their families also see how great they are in their unique um, talents. Let's Grow Together is an e-commerce website that specializes in the sale and delivery of fresh fruit and vegetables to the university populace. This is done to create employment opportunities for students from low income generating households. The future of Let's Grow Together is a bright future. We envision spreading Let's Grow Together to other university campuses to assist with the various challenges exposed during the Fismas Fall movement. I am the creator of Girl Power South Africa and what that is is a platform for girls to find their voice so that they are able to stand up for themselves and other people that may not be able to. Um, I came across this uh, briefly last year when I went through a phase in my life that affected me negatively and I thought you know if I can go through this many other girls can go through this as well and even though some um, problems may not just be emotional like uh, self-esteem and confidence other things are, are very economical like lack of textbooks and lack of guidance in schools and homes and because of this you have girls that feel as though they don't have a future and they don't dream because they think that they cannot reach that so with South Africa we work with girls ages 10 to 24 to say hey you can do this, you do have a future. And we help them through various events, camps, um, and anything we can to just let them know that they do have a future, they can dream, and they can reach that dream. It's been an absolutely fantastic show. Thank you so much for making the time to join us. And remember, as we head into the new year and 2018, if you want the Young Money team to come to you, it's really, really simple. All you need to do is follow me. It's at The Real Nosy or at CNBC Africa. Our hashtag is Young Money 10 I look forward to another bumper year of stories about young African entrepreneurs.